programs and underwriters laboratories would like to welcome you to Engineers Week at Epcot. Epcot is the perfect place to celebrate STEM, which we call science, technology, engineering, and math. Because the principles of STEM are used every day to bring big and office, often impossible ideas to life. Science and engineering are used to build great rides and attractions, like the ones you will ride here at Epcot today, but they also have a very important job behind the scenes in helping keep you and those around you safe. Today, Walt Disney Parks and Underwriters Laboratories are pleased to present a very special guest who's going to show us a way cool demonstration about fire and why understanding the fire triangle is not just smart, it's safety smart. Please join us in welcoming to the stage engineer, educator, and celebrated TV personality, Bill Nye, the science guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see you all. Everything here came out of someone's head. Someone thought of every shape you can see. In fact, someone probably put every plant where it is. And they did that according to a plan that came out of their head. And the person who did that was almost certainly not just a scientist, oh no, almost certainly an engineer. An engineer, people. Fine. Don't let them go up to be doctors and lawyers and such. No, engineers. We got big problems in the world, huge problems. We need engineers to solve them. Now, young people, does everybody know what an underwriter is? Does anyone know what an underwriter is? Anybody? Sounds like a parent. Uh, I couldn't quite make it out, but I'm sure it was very funny. <laughs> Uh, an underwriter is sort of a British word, it means uh, insurance. It means that they will pay for something going wrong. So here's the idea for those of you who want to go in the insurance business. Everybody you've ever met gives you a little bit of money. Then once in a while, and most of those people, nothing ever goes wrong for them. They don't have car wrecks, they don't have houses burned down, but a few of them have their house burned down, and if that happens, you give them some of the money back to rebuild their house. All right, well, if their house has toasters in it, light bulbs, uh, barbecue grills, these are all things that could be trouble. They could be happy and wonderful for cooking, but they could cause a fire. So Underwriters Laboratories make sure that the stuff you buy is safe, or safe enough. And in order to do that, they have to be aware of the fire triangle. Yes. For this, we need an assistant. We need help. Somebody. Young man in the black back there. Come on up. Yes, you, you, you. This is heavy. What's your name, you know? Caleb. Caleb? Is that right? Did I say it right? Okay. Caleb, do you know the fire triangle? If you had to guess, what would you say are the three things on the fire triangle? <laughs> Oxygen, heat, and fuel. That's brilliant. So you can hold it a second. But the idea is that you flip all these back and it lights up and it's exciting. But it doesn't, you can't hardly, you can hardly see it in those bright lights. But the fire triangle uh, was something that I learned when I was in school, and it's still true. Now, Caleb, do you know what a backdraft is? Or a smoke explosion? That was my little uh, impression. You know what smoke is? Uh, good. Let me show you something. Caleb, ladies and gentlemen, with the fire triangle. Very nice. You want to fold it back? If you hit the switches, it lights up. It's really cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> so, Caleb, please. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, my friends, the surprising thing for most of us is that when you have a fire, safety first, and by the way, my friends, these are American octopus. These, these glasses are old. This is uh, Rob from Underwriters Laboratories. He is an underwriter. underwriter. 
using the flaming flame of happiness and uh, opening the secret valve of uh, success. <laughs> You're all got you you cut you uh, you think there we go. Cool. So the surprising thing for many of us. Hey, do you guys? Does anybody have a rubber stopper? Do you, do you have one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The idea of answering questions is that they're connected to the uh, question. Anyway, so I happen to have a rubber stopper. Okay. So uh, what's surprising for most of us is, like in the example of a solid like wood, the, the solid doesn't burn. Instead, it's a gas. So when gasoline burns in your car engine, it turns to a vapor at first, turns to, a, to a molecules going so fast they move around like uh, air. And then uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, propane, like you have in your, many of your barbecues, burns, it's the gas that's burning. Well, when wood burns, the wood turns to a gas before it burns. Most of us uh, have never taken the time to be aware of that. So as Rob from Underwriters Laboratories heats up our distilling flask, smoke starts to come out of the happy little tube. And if the air conditioning is not out of control, we are able to set the smoke on fire. Oh yes, it's happening. There's a little blue flame. Oh yes. But you can see there's a, quite a breeze up here. Okay, it's burning, and I'm going to move my hand away, so watch. Yeah, there's the smoke. You see, the air conditioning is really wet. See what you can do. You want to heat up the tube a little bit. Cool. There we go, yeah. So it's the gas, in a sense, the smoke that's burning. The smoke carries fuel, so there's a famous thing that people in firefighting are very concerned about called a backdraft, where uh, the fire rushing up causes the smoke to get blown back toward the firefighters, and that's what burns. And then there's another expression, a smoke explosion, where this, I say it so calmly, yeah, smoke explosion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing that will happen in a house fire, very common, it's a very common problem, the house starts on fire and it's full of smoke. And you think you're a human and you think you can crawl out from under the smoke and everything will be great. But if it gets just a little bit hotter, all of that smoke bursts into flame at once and you have an explosion. And that's what's so dangerous. So Rob is working the problem. But do you see how the wind is blowing toward his uh, lab coat? That's what's really making it difficult. And uh, when we set this up, yeah, that's a lower. When we set this up, we uh, didn't realize the air conditioning was going to be such a drag. Uh, try it again. More smoke. Yes. More smoke. Rob, we need more power. Oh, that's pretty compelling. So, uh, I'm sorry. It's lower, lower, hotter, hotter, yes. So um, when you launch a space shuttle, which we will do tomorrow, it is to be hoped, uh, you combine the fuel with oxygen very, very fast. Uh, even faster than this. It's a joke. <laughs> and so without the oxygen, the fuel doesn't go anywhere. And the oxygen on the Earth, which is where I live, uh, comes from living things. It comes from plants. As far as we know, without plants, you don't get oxygen in the atmosphere. One more reason the Earth is so special, and one more reason we have to take such a specially good care of it. Uh, come down there. Oh, yes, that was good. Come out here a little bit. Yeah. Come on, baby. We got very good smoke right now, but we're having the other issue. All right, people. Let me see. Ah, Rob and I are having fun, aren't we, Rob? Time of our lives. And you'll see a liquid coming out of there that is water. When, when things burn, you may have noticed if you have a gas stove, a tea kettle or a saucepan, 
when you first turn it on, it gets uh, dropped with some moisture on it. So the gas, when it's burning, it makes carbon dioxide, it makes heat, but it also, strangely enough, makes water vapor. Water vapor comes out of the tailpipe of a car and it's visible on a cold day when it turns to little gray droplets. Well, there you go, you guys, really. It is, it is a smoke machine. So, let's take three questions. Anybody have any questions? Nobody. Girl in blue. How what? Can you get an adult to yell for you? Stand up and yell, girl in blue. <laughs> Sit down and yell, girl in blue. How? How does the smoke do what? Can't quite hear. How does the smoke catch on fire? How does the smoke catch on fire? Rob is helping it. But there it is. There's the, there's the flame. See the blue flame? So the smoke is coming off the wood, coming down the tube, and catching fire down here. So it's not burning inside, and it's not the wood itself that's burning, it's the gas or the vapor that's coming off the wood that's burning. Bro, that was a good one. That was good. That's a good one. That's a good one. So uh, it's, that's why smoke uh, in a control in a confined space can be quite dangerous. And this is why Underwriters Laboratories want you to be aware, aware, aware. Woman with Mickey Mouse glove, girl with Mickey Mouse glove. Yes. How hot is the wood? Well, I'd say it's um, cooler. I'd say it's 300, uh, 500 Celsius. So it's not hot enough to melt aluminum, but it's almost hot enough. Yeah. It's 450, it's hotter than a pizza. It's about as hot as a pizza, man. About as hot as a pizza. Guy in red, last question, guy in red. The one source of energy that will never run out. Brain power! best friend in the world, but we had a good time. And, uh, what people love about the world of energy, that's right, it's air conditioning. So I hope you guys, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. I'm going to go over here and sign some stuff. Thank you all for coming. Yeah.